When did you get eyes? But summer will be over by the time I get them finished. Gussets, the black magic of the seamster, the mystic arts of patterning, the workaround of the Bronze Age tailor. I've tried twice and failed to add a gusset to a shorts pattern. This time, I plan to succeed. A gusset is intended to add movement to a garment. Here you can see the forever jeans, and as the inseam straightens out, excess fabric bunches up around the hips, but in comparison, on a Zubon, the excess fabric in the crotch allows the garment to lay flatter. This is the goal for this year's shorts. You need a trouser block. Don't have one? Draft your own with maths and tools? Find the link in the description. Working from the center rise out, I remove the pleat from the front waist making sure the new length will fit my measurements. I do the same with the dart on the back. There's no seam allowance on this pattern, so I eyeball that as I cut the twelve from scraps. The side seam is a little forward and the seat is too deep. To fix the fit, I pin the side seam into a better shape. I like my shorts short. So I'm going to crop them here. I'm going to drop the waistline rise on the front, but leave most of the rise in the back, in the hopes that I can flatter the tummy but keep my arse covered, which I literally do with a plate to draw the desired gusset and complete on the front by bringing the inseam forward. Satisfied with my adjustments, I mark the point where I want the side panel to start and adjust it where I want the gusset to end. I mark in the new style lines for the gusset and the seam to join the side and back panels. Sketch in the shape for the pockets. Then I destroyed my work, but that gives me patterns for the front, side, center back and the elusive gusset. Trouser block, your gateway to a world of pain and anguish. I'm into unknown territory now. For the first time, I'm trying slash and spread. The idea is to add volume to the centre rise. I mark a straight line as this will now be a cut on the fold pattern. And I aim to lay the pattern out flat along this line, then mark out the edge. Curious, I measure the original centre rise and compare it to the new pattern. I've added 20 centimetres. That's a very dropped crotch. I then trace and cut out the other pattern pieces. In case you didn't know, the NS stands for nappy shorts. I try again with the spread and aim to reduce the drop by shortening the overall length of the gusset. However, this increases the width, moving some of the additional material into the inseam. 12.3 is definitely an improvement, but there's still too much excess in the crotch. But first, I fit the waistline that has expanded from dropping the front rise. I wanted to avoid this, but I'm going to add a seam into the gusset to raise the crotch. I'm also thinking that I can improve the silhouette by taking a bit off the top of the gusset at the back. So I fold up the back of the gusset and mark a new curve, reshape the inseam, shift the join between the side and back panels so that I can then take in the waistline. Giving me version five of the pattern, and a new twirl. So this is the pattern I'm going to go with. There are some issues. Main one being I'm still not happy with the shape of the back gusset. I think there's still a wee bit of excess of fabric that could be taken out of this. Do you call these cuffs when they're like halfway up your leg? But yeah, obviously these are all over the place and I'll need to refine that. The other thing is that they're feeling a bit tight and I don't know if that's because it's a non-stretch fabric or if it's the pattern. So what I need to do now is move on to the final material. 
And for material on this project, I've got these two guys. I don't even know what to say about this, but the fonts are just amazing. The material is horrible. It's really soft on the inside, but it's really horrible on the outside. I'm guessing it's a lot of polyester. Oh, we'll never know. The tag is completely white. And then on the other side, I've actually got it's an old uh, Scouts jumper. Scouts make good quality garments. Bet you this is cotton. 65 poly. 35 cotton. The reason I picked this up more than anything is because the patches are awesome. We've got obviously the scout patch, this like eager reader, uh, but best of all, where is it? Ah yes, creative badge. That's going on something. If these shorts work out, it'll go on these. Um, oh, and I can't talk about this just now, but when I can, I will let you know. assembled with a running stitch for one final fitting. I take one more chunk out from the back gusset and mark a line for the cuff. I test the look with a line of straight stitch and content, I cut the cuff to shape, unpick the garment, then cut the opposite panels to match. I can now trace the finalised pattern. Off camera, I draft patterns for the front pocket bag and side patch pockets. I use the pocket bag to guide the cut on the front panel. And join the opening, right side to wrong side. The backs of the pocket bags are joined to the front and the pockets are pressed into position and top stitched. Next, the top and the bottom of the side panel pockets are pressed over and top stitched. Then joined to the side panel on three sides. With everything prepped, the garment is assembled with a lightning bolt stitch to allow some stretch and I use a zigzag to secure the raw edges. And because I'm being a good boy, I press the seams and we're almost finished. me, the sensational sewist, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Whoa! My spider sense is warning me that you haven't clicked the like button. You know, subscribing, liking, and commenting can be a powerful tool to help a YouTube channel grow. And well, as someone very important to me always said, with great power, comes great responsibility. Last step, waistband. I had salvaged the ribbing from one of the jumpers and it fits the elastic I have perfectly. I make a loop of elastic that's tight but comfortable. I trim the ribbing to length, then join the ends. I secure the ribbing around the elastic with a lightning stitch and pin the waistband into position. Finally, I join the two parts together, stretching the waistband to fit the shorts. And this is the finished garment. Ugh. False. So there aren't any killers on this garment, but there are a few areas where I could make improvements. The main one being my plan to raise the rise on the back. It didn't work. All it's done really is angle the shorts. The garment still sits naturally on the waistline, which means that the whole thing angles slightly forward. So I just uh, don't do that. <laughs> that. That was a bad idea. 
front pockets. Uh, maybe should have been a bit more generous with the size of them. I really have to squeeze my hands in there. It does mean that they're very secure pockets. I tried really hard to get these to line up and match. I didn't quite get it, but nobody's looking that close. The only other thing, and this is something if you've watched a few videos on the channel, you've noticed before that when I pre-assemble my garments, I'm often quite lazy and don't pull the threads before I go into final construction, trapping those loose running stitch threads in the garment. And yeah, they're, they're there in this one. They'll fall out in their own time, but it's not great, is it? But ultimately, the goal I set out to achieve, which was make a nice gusset, it worked. The garment runs totally flat on all of its seams, but it also adds this like extra dimension to it when it's laying flat. Like it wants to be a curved garment. It wants to like sit in, in a human shape. So I'm going to give it a patch. I'm going to give it the, the Scouts patch, not the creative one. I'm going to hoard that one until I find the garment that it's meant for, but it's um, it's square. And the uh, when I took this off the garment, it left behind a bit of fusible lining that's much easier to cover up than to try and remove. So other business. Well, I told you or didn't tell you about the boxes, so that's that covered. I'm no further forward with the trousers. They're sitting waiting once, once this film's finished. After that, I, I don't know. I've been watching a lot of Sewing Bee. Any of you guys watching Sewing Bee? I haven't learned their names, but uh, I like the old guy a lot. He's like my spirit animal. He's the sewist I want to be. The Glasgow girl is doing pretty well. I don't know, is she a Glasgow girl? She sounds like she's a Glasgow girl. Pretty pleased with her, her, her stuff in the last episode that I watched. Obviously, the girl that does the period stuff, I think she's probably the technically the best sewist. Like, she seems to be doing a lot of really good work, but we'll, we'll find out as the challenges get a bit more intense. Anyway, I think that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Like, it's genuinely massively appreciated. Please do, as Spidey says, share, like, comment, send it out into the world. Help me find more people that will sit through the chaos that was a lot of uh, drafting you had to sit through, so I really appreciate you. I'm just gonna keep doing this little bit of hand sewing and uh, talk to you next time, all right?